today I'm here with a new video and if you don't know who I am, my name is Lisa. I am a group TV YouTuber that is trying to have a year long no buy and today I am here with a tag video. And uh, this tag is called Makeup Decluttering Tag. And this is the created by Ava Marie, I will leave her down in the description. I have seen this on Annette's Makeup Corner and also on Jelica Nyquist. I will leave all the people that I've seen down in the description. And these are 10 questions about the cluttering makeup. So I think we just hop into this. So the first question is a makeup item that is impractical. And I this was a hard question for me, but I took this one. This is um, Prep Talk Smoothing Pre Makeup Face Mask from the Swedish brand Budgie. A lot of Swedish influencers and people that I follow from Sweden did rave about this. They loved it so, so much for me. No. So, this is a face mask that is also. A primer so you're supposed to have this as your last step in your skincare routine and apply a really generous layer and then either let it sink in or take away the excess with uh, a cotton pad and usually when I do my makeup I do it maybe some hours after I have done my skincare routine or it, yeah, it doesn't like clutch that good for me and I don't get this. I have not made it work that good for me. I do not love it. I do not know what the hype was all about. But I just think it's impractical because you're putting something on. You're doing a skincare routine. You put this on. You take the excess away and then you're going to put on your makeup. I, I, I think it's just a stupid step. And... Uh, I don't know why I fell for it, but I do not like this, and this is not convenient for me. I just, it's just not the product that I like, and I do not get why it was so hyped. Question number two is a mascara that definitely expired, and I can with pride say that I do not have any expired mascaras in my home. I have one open for like four months, and then I throw it away. And I open a new one and I only use one at a time. Right now I have this open, NYX worth the hype. So I do not have any old mascaras. I'm good at that one. One thing I'm good at. Question number three. A red lipstick that you never wear. And if you know me, I do love red lips. Red lips is one of my favorite things. And I actually do have some reds in my collection that I never use. I try to use them, I put them on, I look at myself and like, this is not me. And one of those is from LH Cosmetics and this is their Fantastic in Bullseye. I, I don't know. I don't know if it is because it's a creamy lipstick. I don't know if it is just the undertone that is off for me. But I think it is because it's so shimmery and creamy. I have other Fantastics that I do love. But this red one, I don't like this. I tried to wear it like a couple of days ago. I put it on. I was almost out the door. Looked myself in the mirror for the last time. And was like, no. This, I, I don't like it. I, it doesn't work for me. So I never use it. But I still keep it for some reason. But... I think this is the red in my collection that I have used the least. Even though I love the formula, I love how it feels on my lips, but it just... I don't like it. I don't know if it is because I can't get like a super straight line because it's... Um, light coverage and so shimmer. I could use a lip pencil on there, but... I don't want to struggle with the more any more steps, so yeah. This is a red lipstick I never use. Question number four: a high-end item that is not worth the price. 
and I'm going to say the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. I bought this because I wanted to try what Natasha Denona was all about. So I bought this. I did struggle a bit which of the palettes that I was going to buy, but I bought this one because it isn't like similar to any of my other palettes or not that similar to any of the other palettes I do have. Um, but I do not understand. It's not a bad formula. It's not. But I do have palettes that are better than this. That cost like 10% of the price for this one. I do not understand the thing about Natasha Nona's eyeshadows. I just don't. And what I know, this is a palette that people do really like from Natasha Denona. This is not like a dud in her brand. People do like this. And it's not only about the color story. I am not like... I do not understand what the hype is all about. And I do not think Natasha Denona is worth the price. Do I regret buying this? No, because it's not the worst palette that I have ever tried. Am I happy that I bought it? Maybe not. Then question number five is a drugstore dud. And I did not know what to say. I don't know if I have that many drugstore things that I don't like that much. But it, I, I took this one. This is the Elf Boreless Party Primer. The hype was so big. And then it finally came to Sweden. I bought it. As you can see, I have used it like maybe six times. I don't... I don't know. I didn't think it did anything other than my other primers. I didn't see any like difference with it. And I don't know. Maybe it's not just for me. But I do not like this. I think it's... I don't know why I don't decluttering this, because this is really old, maybe I should just throw it away. Because this isn't, this isn't a product that I like. And I don't think, I will miss it if I throw it away actually, so maybe I should just toss it. But yeah, this I think is a drugstore dud. Question number six is an eyeshadow palette that you did forget that you had. And... Um, I, it wasn't that long time ago that I did a palette collection video where I went through all my eyeshadow palettes. So I think that I have like pretty like good knowledge of which eyeshadow palettes that I have. But this is a palette that I don't use that much. I do forget about that I have it. And that is the Lethal and Yulina palette. This was their first palette. That was like a pre-made palette that you can't take out any of the shades. Uh, this is with an uh, influence from Germany. That is Yulina. And I do like this palette. I have done a couple of videos on it. I had it as a palette of the month. Um, at one point. But I like forget that I have this one. And not many people talk about this. I think this came out pretty early. Before Lethal is that big that they are now. So maybe that's why. I don't know if everybody has this palette. And I don't know if it was more like in Germany. Because I, I don't think she do videos in English actually. So maybe that's why. But I do forget that I have this. Even though... I do like the colors, but uh, it is a palette. I have it on my table, but it's like I'm not seeing it, so I never use it. And it was a while ago, and I do forget about it. So maybe I should just try to use it. Because also, like, when I think of Lethal, I think more about all the single shadows I have. And I tend to use the single shadows more than the palettes, like the pre-made palettes that I bought from Lethal. I don't know why. That's just it. So I do forget that I had this. Question number seven. A foundation that is not your shade match. And I do have some backups that is not my shade. That I mix 
F2 and mix with a white mixing base. But as for right now, the foundations that I have open is my shade. I did just finish this one, the Fenty Beauty East Drop. I did really like this one, but it's like so it's so empty. I took off the stopper and everything, but like nothing more come out. Um, maybe I can mention this Skin Realist from Nabla. I did a video about like Nabla and a whole review on the brand. I can leave it up here. This works. This is a little bit off, but I can make it work, but it's not perfect. I would like a lighter shade. This is the lightest one. I would like a lighter shade on this one because it's not perfect for me. It does work, but it's not perfect. So yeah, I guess I do have a foundation that's not my match, but I, I can make it work. It doesn't look like totally off, but it could look better. Question number eight, a product that wasn't worth the hype. And here I have a few, maybe, I don't know how many I should take. Maybe I should take two. Um, first off, the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I know that not everybody loves it, but it was such a hype about it. I got like a little sample size. I bought, I think it was for Christmas a year, two years back maybe. And you can buy a little like with sample sizes. And it was one little Hydro Grip Primer. Worst primer ever tried it was like glue and I know that some people like 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 the glue feeling of it I do not I think it was awful it didn't like I don't know it was just disgusting I no I hated it and uh, the hype was so big and I think that still many people do has it as one of their absolute favorite primers and I do not get it. And I know that people that have the same, same skin type as me, like more to the drier side, do love it. But I cannot understand why, because it's an awful primer. I just hate it. Another thing that was hyped that I did not like was the Natasha Denona face palette. I had a quad, I think it was the Bloom palette. I did sell it to one of my friends and I I couldn't make it work for me the way that I thought a product that expensive would work for me and uh, yeah uh, it doesn't maybe Natasha Denona isn't my brand is it maybe that simple that Natasha Denona isn't for me it might be but yeah uh, the Milk Hydro Grip Primer and Natasha Denona Bloom Palette. Didn't work for me. I didn't like any of them. Question number nine is a concealer that you couldn't make it work. And um, I don't have it anymore because I did uh, decluttering it a long while back. But it is the Colourpop. I can put a picture on it here. The Colourpop Concealer. It was the worst. I do not, I am not like very dry around my eyes, it's like the only place in my face where I'm kind of oily, at least my eyelids, but that concealer dried up my under eyes, I got like a dry like eczema here, it was dried, it was red and it itched like crazy, and I, I couldn't use it, it's it didn't work but strangely enough it was only on this eye and not on that eye but I couldn't make it work it looked awful and no and I tried to have it like to do cut crease with couldn't make it work for that either I did not like it and um, I will never ever buy it again and that actually scared me to try any other concealer from Colourpop because I wanted to try their they came out with pretty fresh um, concealers, like a hydrating concealer. 
and I was like no I don't think I even want to try this even though I think it will work better for me but yeah the concealer from Colourpop an awful concealer and question number 10 if you had to start one makeup category from scratch what would it be and I think that I would say blush I have for a normal person I have a lot of blushes for somebody that does YouTube and makeup wise it may be not but I have so many blushes I have decluttering a lot of them but I do still have many blushes and now I know what I want in a blush so if I sh would have to start blush over I think it would be fun <laughs> And now I know what I want in the blush. I know what I like the most. I know what I don't like that much. I know what I want for like some creams, but maybe not too many. And I just know more what I want. And I do not need that many blushes that I have. I think I easily could decluttering more, but. Um, I could so yeah if I would have to start over my blush collection I could do it so yeah that was all for this video I do really hope that you like that I'm doing a tag again I do miss this times when it was a lot of tag videos I like to do tag videos so I will see if I can find some more to do or maybe do you like some older ones that I haven't done for a couple of years maybe that would be fun please let me know if you want to see that. So yeah, uh, I guess that was all for this video. And if you're not subscribing to my channel, please do so you don't miss any of my videos. And I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye!